Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to make some piranha solution. For this you will need some 11.9% hydrogen peroxide and 96% sulfuric acid. Although this cannot be stressed enough, this preparation or better this experiment is really dangerous. And normally 30% hydrogen peroxide would be used but we don't have that and it also works with 11.9% hydrogen peroxide. Do not try this at home. We start off by adding a large portion of hydrogen peroxide to our beaker. This was followed by a nearly two times larger amount of concentrated sulfuric acid. The addition has to be done slowly because it will heat up quite a lot. Normally I would use this hot plate to heat it up even more to make it more reactive, but the solution seemed to be already hot enough and therefore we are going to start by adding this top secret letter to the beaker. Let me bring it a little closer for you to see. And let's throw it in. It immediately starts to bubble a lot, but it's not enough. Let me heat that up. It was actually the case that we haven't added enough sulfuric acid and now that problem has been fixed. The paper immediately started to dissolve, leaving no residue behind. For all of the hydrogen peroxide decomposers, we are also going to add in some toilet paper. This time the reaction is more violent and you can see it decompose into a clear solution. This is why a piranha solution is also used to clean organic residue from beakers. We've also got two raisins, a walnut and a piece of the, the, the tourist stramonium seed pot and let's throw them in. Let's see what happens. Raisins float in concentrated sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid has a really high density. The solution turns brown and the brown stuff immediately becomes clear again. All of the stuff gets oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. By the way, when sulfuric acid reacts with hydrogen peroxide, H2SO5, also known as Keros acid, which is highly oxidizing, and water are formed. The raisins are still dancing around in the speaker and you should therefore not try this at home because it will also react with your finger if you stick your finger in. Now look at that. The raisins have completely decomposed and the walnut is still floating around in there. I'm also going to try this piece of plastic and I don't know if this will decompose but I'm going to try. Does it decompose? No, only the paper from the pa on the back side of the plastic where some crucial key is starting to decompose and oh, look at that. The walnut has turned into goo and there's nothing left. Let me throw in that leaf I just found. Uh, it's starting to bubble violently and the leaf also starts to dissolve. After a while there was nearly nothing left in the beaker and it was still fizzing profusely and therefore we're just going to throw in some more paper. It gets black for us the solution and afterwards it will turn clear. If there's enough hydrogen peroxide left, it doesn't look like that and the sulfuric acid only dehydrates cellulose into carbon and water and also CO2. 
I'm going to add some more hydrogen peroxide to. Ah, no, that's a bad idea to add hydrogen peroxide to hot sulfuric acid. We're not going to do that, and we will simply leave the beaker like this. We ended up putting the beaker onto hot plate, and yeah, still adding hydrogen peroxide to dissolve all of the stuff because we don't want to clean up the beaker. After a while, the solution turned clear again, but there's still some fizzing from hydrogen peroxide decomposition. If you wonder what we are going to do with the waste, well, we are going to fish out the plastic and basically this is just dilute sulfuric acid. This is going into my pool as pH minus. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me one of these and consider subscribing for more chemistry content in the future. I wish all of you a nice day. Until next time, bye.